Almost every morning, after letting the dogs outside, I typically peruse a few tech websites to make sure there wasn't some big story that broke while I was resting. Sometimes it'll be something that doesn't require a lot of research for me to do a video on it that day, like NVIDIA's mining restrictions. I knew exactly what I wanted to say, and there wasn't a lot of research needed. But sometimes I go down a rabbit hole and do research for a few days. Uh, sometimes leading to a story that was unrelated to the original one. And, and well, that's what happened a few days ago when a lot of websites covered this tweet suggesting that AMD is working on, you know, a heterogeneous combination of big and little cores for upcoming Zen architectures. Honestly, the biggest surprise about seeing that to me was seeing other people surprised by this information. It, it reminds me of the discussion I had with Dan on the last Broken Silicon about the competition I believe we're going to see out of Intel and AMD. In the last Broken Silicon, I confirmed early massive IPC increase and in core or really thread count increase details I had on Lunar Lake. Check that out. But a key point of that conversation that it wouldn't surprise me if some people missed was, look, things that Intel's working on right now, you can bet AMD is working on similar things as well and vice versa. I believe both of these companies are going to have massive, tremendous magnitudes IPC increases over what's out now within five years and giant thread count, instruction, evolution, like all of these things. They're, both Intel and AMD are working towards fully disaggregated architectures that can put multiple chips or tiles together using various fabric technologies and stacked memory. They're working towards, I believe, architectures that in 2025 will make Zen 2 Look like how we think of Skylake now. I think gamers need to buckle up for the competition in CPUs we're going to see from 2022 and onwards. I think this idea of trying to time your CPU purchase, just get what you need, get it now, and don't look back. Because every two years, if you waited for whatever that would be in two years, in another two years, something insanely better will be out Anyways, get what you need. Competition is here. Intel is about to not be sitting still, although they still are a little bit right now. And yeah, that gets me to, well, the main meat of this video, Zen 3 Plus. When I talk about or hype up, as some people would say, the architecture is coming over the next five years, a lot of people will go, well, so should I at least wait for Zen 3 Plus this year and then just try to hold out for like Zen 5 or Lunar Lake or something? And I would say... Yeah, I don't think you should be betting on Zen 3 Plus. Now let's take a step back so I can explain. For the past few months of broken silicons, I have been speculating, not confirming. Look, I've really been paying attention to Intel leaks recently. I've been speculating when people ask me in reader mails on broken silicon that really Zen 3 Plus could only be one of a few things. The first option is some new I.O. die with DDR5 support on AM5 and a die shrink. That'd be really exciting, I suppose, if AMD launched some early chip on AM5 next to Alder Lake. That could easily give a 10 to 15% boost year over year over Zen 3. It could be that. Or, number two, it could be some beautiful AM4 swan song, like a Zen 3 Plus that is refreshed on AM4, surprisingly again, that gives us a 5 to 10% boost. Maybe a tweaked architecture on N7P or on N6, you know, 6 nanometer. Or the third option, simply an XT refresh or something close to that, you know, like what we saw with the 3900, 3800 XT that came out after Zen 2, a little less than a year after that came out. It can really be one of those three things, some kind of early AM5 thing with a new IO die, some type of maybe new IO die, but on AM4, but not quite as good as if it had a new motherboard, or number three, just like some kind of a XT refresh or maybe a little bit better than that. Well, here's the thing. If we go back, people would be good to remember that Warhol was really only ever leaked last year as a 7 nanometer refresh of Zen 3, maybe with some slightly better than XT enhancements. And I reached out to a source at AMD who confirmed to me Warhol was or I guess maybe is a real project at the very least. Warhol is. There is a code name for Warhol, 100% confirmed. However, this person had never heard of Zen 3 Plus. Now, 
that doesn't immediately make me throw it out because, look, AMD is a, not a tiny company. Not everyone in every division knows about every other project being worked on. But, you know, when I scoured through my old videos for references of a Zen 3 Plus, looking for things that weren't speculation, I found just this. I think they're going to get Zen 3 out on 7 nanometer to desktop late this year. They'll get a very real desktop launch of Zen 3 at the end of this year. And then while they're doing that, they will die shrink Zen 3 to five nanometer, probably with a couple of tweaks to then do the true big update to Renoir. And then later that year, a five nanometer Zen 3 plus or Zen 4 even update to upgrading Cezanne. And that was in reference to Gamers Nexus confirming some sort of an enhanced Zen 3 APU coming in 2022. Not coming to desktop, not 2021. And I do believe Gamers Nexus on that source. I haven't seen his roadmap, but I don't believe he's lying. So this then was also backed up by another source connected to the motherboards who said this, that it was only ever a slight enhancement that he had heard about for a Zen 3, not a plus, an enhanced version of Zen 3 next to Rembrandt. And then another source, this one here has literally never been wrong, told me that he has never heard of a Zen 3 Plus. Guys, if a Zen 3 Plus is coming out this year, they would be testing it now. It would be like design complete, but it's not. And he even said that AMD's DDR5 progress isn't on the same level as Intel. So option number one of some AM5 thing is just right out. And so far, literally everyone I talk to who I consider my most reliable sources has never heard of a Zen 3 Plus, even if they've heard of a Warhol. And so, honestly, after talking to a substantial number of sources and pushing them as hard as I could, even ones that don't like telling me stuff sometimes because, well, you can understand why, I know a Warhol did exist. But if we look at the actual roadmap, and I'm talking about the original roadmap leak from last year, not the one with asterisks all over it with people on Reddit speculating, Warhol just seems like at best it was an enhanced version of Zen 3, but not even a full plus. And there's no reference to any Warhol or Zen 3 plus being worked on for the past few months. X570S, as I confirmed, just stands for silent. It's a more efficient chipset. It is not preparation for Zen 3 plus. Nobody connected to motherboards has any details on Zen 3 plus, most saying they never even heard of it. I should have dug into this a month ago because I've been talking about Zen 3 Plus like it could be a few things. But after spending a few days really, really digging into it, guys, I do not think Zen 3 Plus was ever a real thing for desktop. And if there was a recent cancellation, it was at most for a Warhol 7 nanometer speed refresh with a couple of small tweaks or an XT refresh. It was not something akin to what Zen Plus was over Zen 1. The fact is half of my sources think Warhol itself never made it out of the planning stages. And to me, when I hear people say there was a recent cancellation just moments after saying all this weirdly detailed stuff about a Zen 3 Plus, I have to say it sounds like people covering for bad leaks. And so unfortunately, in this video, this is my summary of what I think would or could happen with a Ryzen 6000 release this year. Number one, remember option number one, there's just no way some five nanometer thing on AM5 with DDR5 support is coming out from AMD this year. Zero percent chance. That would have been awesome. And I was hoping for that, but... We would know way more about that by now. And what I hear about the state of AMD's DDR5 memory controllers suggests, well, they may have LP DDR5 things coming in Van Gogh, if that wasn't canceled, by the way, which it probably was. That's not DDR5. LP DDR5 and DDR5 are not the same thing. DDR5 isn't ready at AMD. And there's no evidence something this monumentous is coming. We would know about it. And then option number two, an enhanced Zen 3 Plus on a 7 nanometer class node where there's 6 or N7P. And no, none of my best sources have heard of a Zen 3 Plus. And well, I kind of shrugged that off a few months ago. At this point, it's too late. There's no Zen 3 Plus full refresh coming, at least not this year. Could something happen where it comes out early next year and Zen 4 is delayed? I guess, but I, I don't think that's what's going on. Finally, option number three. 
Warhol was a thing that at least made it into design phase, likely a slightly enhanced version of Zen 3, but not a full plus. In fact, when I look at that Warhol roadmap next to Rembrandt, I remember that N6 for Rembrandt is design com and IP compatible with N7P. I could have seen that. I could have seen them design an enhanced Zen 3, not a full plus, and then use like kind of that CPU IP block on six nanometer for Rembrandt APU, and then also refresh it on N7 with just higher TDPs or something for desktop to bide some time until Zen 4. I could have seen that, but as far as I can tell, that's at best what it would be. And it seems like even that's been canceled if there was a recent cancellation. And again, I think that cancellation would have been in January if it happened. So yeah, I think Rembrandt could still be coming out and it might be that Zen 3 enhanced, which again, Gamers Nexus talked about an APU, no desktop. And all of my sources that have heard of an enhanced Zen 3 was in relation to Rembrandt. That might be real. You can call it Zen 3 plus if that makes you happy, but a desktop Zen 3 plus, I just don't think it's coming out, guys. At best, I think we're getting an XT refresh this year, which an XT refresh, not even one with slight enhancements from Warhol, would be the most boring version of option number three. And I want to be clear that I think there's a very good chance AMD is going to do that. Zen 4 probably isn't launching until mid-2022. And so some simple 2 to 4% performance boost, just binning their existing dies to higher SKUs that they could put aside ahead of time. I think there's a good Good chance AMD does that and it makes complete sense that maybe we haven't heard of these SKUs yet. Although AMD doesn't need some 10% or even 5% enhancement to fend off Alder Lake, you know. By the time Alder Lake's out, Zen 3 will have been out for about a year. And if somehow supply is catching up with demand by then, AMD is more than happy to just do a couple of price drops to fight Alder Lake. It's not like they're even going to lose multi-threading against Alder Lake anyways. And then they can just do that and wait for Zen Four. Make sure they get all of their stock out and then launch that. So yeah, not the most exciting leak, but one that I thought a lot of people would want to hear. I'm sure AMD considered multiple designs, but Warhol doesn't sound like it was ever some massive thing. And even then, it sounds like it may have never left the design phases in January. If anything was coming, anything remotely big from AMD this year in the CPU division, we would know about it right now. We would see more BIOS leaks online. It's not happening. At best, I think we're going to get a XT refresh. And if that happens, well, again, we're going to need to hear about that in a couple of months, or I would start to doubt that as well. If you look back at the timeline for when I leaked information about Matisse 2 and the XT refresh. In fact, if you go back and look at Zen Plus, we knew pretty much everything about 12 nanometers Zen Plus six months before it came out and the same and even earlier. So for Zen 3, I just don't think it's coming out this year. And finally, as you probably saw in the thumbnail and the title, there's another thing I want to talk about. That pesky Ryzen 4700S, an APU that everyone's been assuming is a disabled Xbox die. I'm here to tell you guys that one of my most reliable sources says he's 100% sure it isn't. And that in addition to that, all I can suggest is that when I reached out to people at AMD, what I was told is there are a lot of semi-custom little projects going on in the background that most people never hear about. I mean, heck, people will be good to remember the Subcore Z Plus that had an interesting quad core uh, Zen Plus CPU combined with Polaris. That was an interesting little APU. And so, yes, I know that there's been an Xbox One uh, motherboard that's been out there that Digital Foundry tested. And it's not out of the realm of possibility that something like this could exist. But at least what I'm told, this isn't an Xbox die, and there's no evidence it is. You know, putting the Series X in the background of a slide, yeah, a lot of these Chinese advertisements put a lot of stuff in the background without asking for AMD or Microsoft's position. They can just kind of get away with that if they sell it in China. It's just put there to catch your eye. It doesn't mean it's an Xbox. It doesn't mean it's a PlayStation. I believe it's some other semi-custom product. It's really funky. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my hands on it. But... Some food for thought on that one as well. Not much else to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Don't worry, this is not how the final state of the studio will look. I'm still unpacking, making decisions, and you know, ordering and putting together furniture and things to put up around here. The, the studio is for sure not done, everybody. But you know, look out for that to change in the future, and look out for more leaks and podcasts, including exclusive ones only patrons get access to. If you want access to asking guest questions, early ad-free access to content, the ability to interact with me and the entire community of thousands of patrons on the discord please consider supporting us on patreon that is what makes all of this possible it is not the non-existent youtube revenue we really can't do this me dan gerard without you so if you can support us please consider doing that at the very least please share our videos give us a like and well you know as always then thank you for watching <laughs>